Good morning folks. Uh, welcome to the latest update on aquaponics experiments uh, from Morel, Prince Edward Island. Um, so just uh, made a couple changes to my uh, my system simulator. As you can see I've taken the bell siphon out and I've put the standpipe up and I've put a hole through the side of this thing and uh, another uniseal there. Great little product these things. Love them. Um, and building what's called a U-siphon. Uh, this piece of pipe goes all the way down to the bottom about this far down. Uh, so it's got about a 10 mil clearance off the bottom, 5 mil, 10 mil clearance. Uh, comes up around through, uh, down a little bit of piece of pipe work here and into the bucket. Real straightforward stuff. Uh, it is another siphon technology. Uh, the idea is that as the water level rises up, it starts to spill over through here. As that happens, it starts dragging air with it eventually completely floods the pipe and generates a full siphon effect that'll empty the that'll empty the other top barrel into the bottom barrel. You can see it's starting to run now. It's going to linger like this for almost a full minute at about this speed as it just drains off the last little bit. Um, because there's almost as much water coming in as going out, uh, it takes a few moments. But essentially what's going to happen is that air is going to come, is actually going to wind up filling the pipe backwards this way until the siphon breaks here. And then you'll hear a bit of a, a burping type noise and then it'll stop running entirely and then this barrel will start filling up fairly quickly. Uh, it's the same 800 liter per minute pump. Uh, down the bottom of the bucket is for in my last video, uh, which means that right here I've got a uh, 50 mil to 30 mil reducer. Uh, that's 50 mil pipe, 30 mil pipe down below it. Um, if I go 50 mil pipe the entire way through, the uh, amount of water coming in just isn't enough to properly flood the, the U, um, and so the siphon never starts properly. It hits a state of equilibrium and just stays there. Uh, EU siphons have got a couple of advantages. Um, most notably is the fact that, unlike here, where if I uh, want to use this, I wind up occupying a fairly large piece of uh, territory in my grow bed. You know, the, the the siphon and then the uh, the bell on top of it. Tada! Um, what actually winds up with this is that this actually entire rig can be set under under gravel level and so you can pretty much plant right on top of it. Um, the other thing which is of interest of this is that um, it's just simpler to install. You put the hole, uh, you put your, your center uh, about where you want your water line, um, and uh, that's how it works. Well, that's interesting. Siphon's not letting off this time. It seems to have hit equilibrium. Well, hang on a second. I'm going to pull the power on it. So just turn the pump off. We'll let this thing run itself empty and I'll turn it back on again and uh, let it go through another run and see if it hits equilibrium again. I was running this thing last night and it didn't do this, so I'm sure not sure what's different. So there we go. That's it having drained it out. And so you can see the uh, water's basically right down to the end, end of the pipe. Uh, and has stopped. Uh, the water the reason the water, by the way, the water is so murky is because uh, through a bunch of gravel from the from a gra uh, that I'm going to be using in the aquaponics up front. And of course, all the gravel dust that's on it, the rock dust, 
Um, you know, it's it's azomite, it's great stuff, but uh, it takes a little bit of a few runs around to uh, to rinse out. I'm going to actually be dumping most of this water and uh, any of the rock dust we, we pick up while we're working uh, into the garden because it's a good soil amendment long term. I'm going to plug this thing back in over here. So it pumps plugged back in. Let's see if this thing goes into a, into a, into a equilibrium again. I have seen a lot of folks with uh, what they do is they put a, uh, a bleeder tube basically a, a piece of hose that comes out of the top of this point here down to just above, just nearly the bottom of, the, of this pipe. And the idea is, is that as the water level drops below that point, it starts pulling air up into um, the uh, siphon here, and that siphon breaks the, uh, the air going in, breaks the siphon process, and stops it no matter what. So that may be something that's non-optional. I haven't, uh, haven't experimented with that yet. see that, but we're somewhere between 10 gallons, 38 liters, and 15 gallons, or 57 liters. So we're basically about in the middle is where the water level is on this thing when it's just before the siphon takes off. And you can see the water st starting to go. And there we go. That's the, the full siphon having kicked in. Well, let's see if this thing cuts off the way it's supposed to. Looks to me like the bed's actually refilling. Yeah, it is. So the siphon's still running, but the bed is is slowly filling back up again. That's interesting stuff. Now the water level has stopped climbing. And now the water level is going back down. The uh, siphon's running a little bit faster, in fact.
And yep, you can see the water level is dropping again. Pump still running. I think the water level stabilized again. And this is still going. So that's not very good. I guess the uh, that bleeder pipe is not optional. That's interesting because I ran this thing for almost a half an hour yesterday when I first got it working and didn't actually have this problem. That's kind of interesting. I'm wondering if maybe the uh, the pipe work is sagged or something so the the water behavior is different. All right, folks. Well, um, that's interesting stuff. I'll get back to you once I figure out what's causing it and how to fix it. So, yeah, uh, there's your, uh, your, your morning uh, aquaponic science experiment. Oh, look at that water level's coming back up again. So it looks like it's just going to wobble up and down about a, over a 10, 15 millimeter you know, half-inch sort of water depth change as the uh, the siphon picks up and drops speed. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Thanks for joining me. Uh, if you're interested in keeping on with uh, more updates, please uh, hit the like button. Um, if you have any comments or questions or suggestions about any of this, uh, look forward to hearing from them in the comments section below. Take care. Bye-bye. Howdy folks, uh, Michelle Valancourt back again from uh, Morel, Prince Edward Island. Uh, just as an update to the last uh, piece I posted, I'll probably just tack this video right on to the end of the last one, but uh, I just made a change and it completely fixed the problem where the uh, loop siphon, or the U siphon more specifically, was going into equilibrium. I uh, realized that a lot of these siphon system systems are turbulence driven, which is to say that they're dependent at low speed before the siphon effect um, takes place for some point in the flow to generate a restriction that causes a bit of back pressure, turbulence that churns the water up, allowing a full seal to occur, and that's actually what pulls the slug of air down through the pipe. So I replaced this nice sweeping curved piece with that 90 degree elbow. The effect is pretty damn spectacular, in fact. Watch how fast this thing starts up now. Much more vigorous. A lot more water coming out a lot faster. And it cuts off neatly, just like that. Essentially, it's pulling the water through so fast that it can't hit equilibrium um, because the, I think, because the 90 degree elbow here starts the process that it pull, it's pulling water far faster than the pump can bring in, which is what we want. So essentially, it starves itself out for air down here. 
and then, um, sorry, starves itself out for water, my apologies. So as the, uh, the water level comes up and starts the process again, we'll watch it one more time, and, uh, yeah, I'll call that a wrap. You can see the, the wet mark on the side of the pipe here is about two-thirds the height of the, uh, of the hole. So it looks like you know, your, your water level will be somewhere between on-center and about halfway between the top of the pipe and on-center. So that's a, a good guideline if you're putting this in. This is, uh, I've got a 50 millimeter, no, excuse me, it's a 50 mil um, hole put in the side of it, or it's larger than that, but it's a 50 mil um, Di uh, inside diameter pipe fit for the uniseal. And the siphon's just starting up now. You can see the water level's still going up slowly even as the siphon starts to take off. Just about hit high water now. And there's the siphon. And that's it. That's the uh, siphon broken and all done. So yeah, interesting change. Um, just how going from the uh, original, you know, no turbulence, smooth curve to a sharp 90 degree angle uh, affects the system. Um, I may see if I can't get another one of these fittings and uh, replace the inside one and see if it uh, changes the behavior itself. I'll let you know. Okay, folks, that's it. Thanks for, uh, for joining me. Take care. Bye-bye.